What's up guys, Action here! Today, I have here another graphics card, which is the new GeForce RTX 4080 16GB Advanced Aussie-V from the iGame series, which is a sub-brand of Colorful. We'll talk about the card's design, features, and syempre, benchmarks para malaman natin kung sulit nga ba talaga itong bagong RTX 4080 ni Colorful. But for those who haven't heard of the brand Colorful, they're a Chinese brand which claims to have 20 plus years of history and holds the largest share in the Chinese graphics card market. So before, China focused sila with their graphics card and then they decided to go into other DIY product lines such as motherboards and other hardware, even PCs, memory, SSD, at iba pa, while going global then at the same time. Since previously in unbox ko na ito sa live, you can watch the live stream on my channel. We'll just glimpse at the box contents real quick. Meron siyang white gloves para hindi masyadong kapitan ng fingerprints. Meron ding documentation, mini screwdriver, anti-sag or GPU support, stand since this card is heavy weighing at around 2.4 kilograms. May rubber ito sa ilalim para di gumalaw pag nakakabit na although I wish sana magnetic din ang fit nito para mas stable. The new NVIDIA 16-pin 12V high power connector and of course the graphics card itself. The iGame GeForce RTX 4080 Advanced Aussie-V has 16GB of GDDR6X video memory. So meron siyang 9,728 CUDA cores, a base clock speed of 2,205MHz, and a boost clock speed of up to 2,625MHz when one key overclock is enabled. Pero on our test, umabot siya actually up to 2850 MHz. Colorful actually recommends using 850 watt for this graphics card according to their spec sheet. And since its rated TDP is 400 watts, it is safe to consider using 850 watts power supply and above. At first glance, una-una kong sasabihin is malaki itong graphics card na ito. It will occupy over 3 PCIe slots sa case nyo. Mas malaki pa sa RTX 3080 ko dito and I think even some 3090s out there. So kung bibili ka nito, make sure you check the card's dimensions as well as the case na paglalagyan mo nito kung magkakasya nga ba. For the design, okay yung combination ng black and light gray. Parang brushed metal or aluminum finish siya. Kaya ang lakas ng dating. And meron ding rent accents and RGB illumination from the middle fan which they call gravity rim. Although dial RGB yung lighting nito, I think the red accents medyo hindi fitting. In my opinion lang pero feeling ko di naman na mapapansin ito pag kinabit mo na horizontally. While the fan shrouds are made of plastic naman and then yung word na advanced, umiilaw rin so minimal lang ang RGB illumination. Mapapansin nyo rin at the side where the ports are located, there's three display port 1.4A and one HDMI 2.1 port. And may maliit na button na nakalagay which is the one click overclocking button na umiilaw ng blue kapag pinindot mo. Which simply overclocks the card automatically. Kung gusto nyo pa ng extra performance while gaming. As you can see, medyo makapal din ang heatsinks nito. Which makes the most of the card's size. Equip ito with vacuum copper plate technology along with 9 thermal pipes which means it dissipates heat through phase change. Yung mga fans may dual ball bearing then and 9 blade design which they call hurricane sight blades that promises better airflow. Hindi rin ganun kaingay yung fans for most of our testing. So okay yon while gaming. Unless you'll put it at 100% speed, maingay na yon pag ganun. But before we go to the benchmarks, let's check out first the new iGame Center, which is simply the software for iGame products gaya nitong graphics card natin dito. Here, you can customize the card's RGB lighting, set some effects, monitor temps, and show other hardware information. Even overclock the card and more. Okay naman yung software nila, user-friendly yung UI, and the RGB effect presets are good, although konti lang. Now on the benchmarks, here, meron ako ditong system which has the following specs. And I'll compare it against the RTX 3080 na meron ako dito which is the ROG Strix. So a comparison between previous generation. I tested 6 games at 1440p and 4K all at maximum settings available. And RTX features of unless indicated. 
since these resolutions will definitely take a toll on the GPU than 1080p, along with some productivity and synthetic benchmarks which I think can represent the performance difference between both cards. Also in difference when the one-click overclocking of the RTX 4080 card is enabled or not. So CSGO, we can see that there's some difference in performance sa 1440p versus the RTX 3080, especially sa 1% lows. Although the average at 4K mas mababa yung RTX 4080, sa 1% lows naman mas mataas ito. I double check it but still similar results. Next is in Forza Horizon 5 where we see a bigger leap in 4K, especially on the average FPS. As well as on the 1% lows, medyo malaki din ang itinaas. On COD Modern Warfare 2 naman, it's the same story. But as 1440p this time around, which is around 40 to 50 FPS higher than RTX 3080. Spider-Man Remastered, on the other hand, medyo minimal lang ang difference versus the RTX 3080. And I think this is because the game itself is very demanding already in terms of graphics, so medyo di ganong kataas ang leap in FPS on native rendering. Testing the one-click overclocking mode in 4K on Cyberpunk 2077, we got a few FPS boost lang. Siguro mga 3 to 4 FPS. And versus the RTX 3080, medyo malaki din ang difference especially at 1440p. Adding ray tracing and DLSS in the mix, we'll see that on 4K resolution, ididip niya ng malaki ang FPS pag walang DLSS. But when it is turned on, especially at DLSS performance mode, there's a huge leap which will make it more enjoyable. The same story applies with F122. Between base and overclocking mode enabled sa RTX 4080, there's very minimal difference. And turning the ray tracing features on will also take a hit on the FPS. But enabling the DLSS on performance mode, significant din yung increase in FPS and even further by enabling DLSS 3. On the synthetics and productivity test naman, as you can see, the same story on the games tested also applies to these scores. Minimal lang din ang dinagdag when one-click overclocking is enabled versus the base clock configuration ng RTX 4080. Although when compared to RTX 3080, medyo malaki din ang gap. And dito I think mas ma-highlight yung generational leap ng RTX 4080 compared to the previous generation. Since most of these scores are around 20-50% to 50 better than the previous generation RTX 3080. In terms of thermals naman, I guess the cooling solution works pretty well. Since the card stayed at around 64 to 68 degrees Celsius average during testing the closed side panel and on a room na may ambient temperature na 28 degrees. GPU idle temps is around 31.5 degrees Celsius lang, pretty good in my opinion and I tested it with the overclocking mode on pa. Power consumption, ito medyo mainit-init na usapan. But on idle, the entire system only draw around 98 watts. Pwede na considering the hardware we have here. And on game testing, GPU power peaked at around 375 watts, while the overall system peaked at around 550 watts. So there's a lot of headroom pa in case you overclock further manually and if your power supply is at least 850 watts. Before I end this review, gusto ko lang din ipakita sa inyo itong new product din ni Colorful iGame, which is yung kanilang iGame DNA gaming headset. Maganda yung design niya. May RGB din syempre, di pwedeng mawala yun. As well as USB-C equipped din ito. Of course, the sound, honestly, na-surprise ako since unlike most gaming headset, ito yung feeling ko legit na maganda yung tunog. Not only because it is high-res audio certified, pero even for listening to music, natuwa ako. The clarity, the bass, and the details are there. Meron din itong removable ENC noise-canceling microphone, which makes it good for comms or calls. And there's also headset controls para sa mas madaling volume adjustment and mode switching. And lastly, replaceable magnetic ear cups. So back to the graphics card. At the price of 89,990 MSRP, yes, medyo makatipa rin sa bulsa yung mga graphics cards ngayon. But if you really care about playing the latest games in 4K, especially with RTX features like DLSS 3, which can bump up the FPS even further, this is now another option for you. Meron din silang NB series na graphics cards which is their entry level product line. So kung medyo mahal para sa inyo yung ibang series, that can make the deal kahit papano. The design, maganda siya especially if you have red accents on your build then. Monochrome scheme kaya madaling bagayan and the thermals are great. Well handled siya by the cooling solution. Malaki lang talaga siya, I think that can be the con for most people. A little bit disappointed lang ako kasi medyo konti lang yung dinagdag ng performance for the one-click overclocking mode. 
I think if you know how to overclock manually, mas mailalabas mo yung true potential ng card na ito considering that there's still a lot of headroom left in terms of thermals and power consumption. The difference between RGX 3080 is also impressive somehow. You can really see a big gap. Although mas malakas din ang power consumption for the most part, our system here clearly can handle it. And if you're coming from a 20 series or lower graphics card and balak mo mag-upgrade, this can be a worth it upgrade due to the generational leap. And if you're coming from a 30 series card like the RTX 3080, depende na lang sa'yo kung need mo yung additional performance and features like DLSS 3, which is exclusive sa ngayon on the 40 series cards. So far, wala naman ako naging major issues regarding this card, especially dun sa concerns regarding the new NVIDIA 12V high power adapter. I think need lang talaga siya isaksak ng maayos, make sure it's fully seated since yung mga reported cases ng melting is yung mga hindi daw nakasaksak ng maayos according to NVIDIA. So ito na po yung review ko ng iGame GeForce RTX 4080 16GB Advanced Aussie Dash V. So there you have it. Thank you guys for tuning in. This has been Action. So like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you on my next video.